Here we are once again back in the garage with everyone and I am so excited to be here with you and today we're doing the one maintenance thing that every Subaru owner dreads. Spark plugs. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna show you how to do this easy. Um, there's five tools that you need to actually change the spark plugs and there's gonna be all the supplementary tools to pull out all the accessories that you need to that's around the spark plugs. But overall, I know a lot of people dread this. There's people out there that jack up their engine for some reason, why? I don't understand you. So, I already disassembled all of the accessories around the spark plugs, spark plug areas to kind of make the video a little bit shorter because I know you don't want to sit here for 20, 25 minutes watching me pull out accessories, telling you how to do it. Everything that I've pulled out has been explained in my past videos, but if you need specific explanation, feel free to reach out and I'll, uh, I'll help you walk you through it if you need it. So, we'll jump into what I've already pulled out and what you would need to pull out in order to do this as well. And then we'll jump into uh, taking a look at the spark plugs. We'll go over which ones I'm using. And then uh, we'll dive right into this beast. So this is what the engine looks like with everything torn apart. So we've taken out the battery, the charge pipe for the hot side and the cold side. So both sides, the secondary air injection, injection pump here, which is just these two bolts on uh, both sides of the dip, dip stick. Uh, the air box intake, hot side intercooler piping, and uh, intake air box. So this is everything I've taken out. Uh, battery, intercooler piping, intercooler piping, secondary air injection pump, intake, intake air box lid, snorkel, and air box. So there's not a lot you have to take out. If you have a top mount intercooler up here, you're good to leave it in. Uh, you won't need to take that out. And then with the secondary air injection pump area, this uh, tube that feeds the air into it, just pull it up and behind so that way it's kind of up here and uh, not in your way when you're going down there. Like you can already see the coil packs down there, so easy access. I don't know why people stress about this. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's annoying, annoying maintenance item to do, but we're gonna get it knocked out. So the spark plugs that we're using, NGK Iridium plugs, they're pre-gapped, I think to a 0.032 or 0.32, I don't remember exactly, but they're pre-gapped. I've always ran these, never had an issue with them. And uh, some goo, some nice little spark plug goo. And then uh, these are the five tools that I use to change spark plugs. So quarter inch ratchet with a 12 millimeter, a small flathead screwdriver, a spark plug socket, a three eighths ratchet, and a small extension. It's all you need. It's literally all you need to do this job after you've taken out all of the crap. But the crap took me about 10, 15 minutes to all take out. So I'm gonna get this camera set up over here. We'll start on the driver's side, pulling the coil packs off and the spark plugs out. Then we'll do the passenger side and uh, get this done. As you guys can see right there and then right behind it, those are our two coil packs. So that one bolt on the side of the coil pack right there is a 12 millimeter. We're gonna take both of those 12, 12 millimeters off and then there's a small electrical plug right there also that we're gonna pull off. Just for a frame of reference here, there's your oil fill and then right below it, that's where your coil packs are gonna be. So my tripod just broke too, like this dinky guy. So. I'm gonna have to get a little creative here with the camera to be able to get these angles now and I'll probably, I'll order another tripod tonight, but that sucks, that's dumb. So I'm gonna jump in here. Um, I'll figure out a way to get this camera in here so that way you can kind of see those guys as I'm pulling them out. But let's just jump into it. So I apologize about this camera angle. I'm trying to work with what I got with this tripod. So I'm gonna get down there, pull those two 12 millimeters out for the coil packs and then uh, we'll just keep going through this guy. With that second coil pack down there, what you're going to have to do is rotate it 180 degrees, unplug it, and pull up and out on it, or else it's not going to come out. So, let's... There we go, there's our second coil pack. So... I'm just going to leave that coil pack on there, I don't really care to take it off. I'm going to shove it up and out of the way though. All right, now we've got access to our spark plugs down there. So the, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab the camera and show you what I mean. All right, so right there, you can see where we took out the coil packs. The front one there and the real, rear one right there. So that rear one's gonna be a little more difficult than the front one to get back out and in. So we're gonna start on the back and then do the front one. Um, and then we'll do a comparison of how these spark plugs look compared to the new ones that I have over on the bench. So 
I'm gonna get this guy thrown back on the tripod. I'm gonna sneak in there and I'll uh, show you the setup that I use to get those guys out. So the best combination that I have found to do this job is to take your spark plug socket, stick a one inch extension on it, and then uh, feed it in and then get this guy on. Make sure, I always make sure beforehand that I'm loosening prior to going in so that way I'm not stripping out spark plugs. But let's just start pulling them out. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna jump on this front one first just cause it's right here. So our spark plug socket is in there. We are getting, all right. Let's pull this guy out. So as this comes out, I like to pull, pull the tool out, take off the ratchet, and then put the spark plug socket back in and just do the rest by hand. It gives a lot more room to pull it out, but it's really not that bad. Look at that, we're pulling out spark plugs and a Subaru. Look at that, ooh. Ooh, look at that, we got one spark plug out of there, so. Looks a little wet, but I don't think so. I'm gonna set this one on the bench, then we'll pull out that back one. And there's our rear spark plug. Look at that. I say, uh, ooh, still some good anises on there, so. I'm going to uh, hop over to the other side, take out the passenger side, and then we'll uh, start reinserting all these. I just got the last plugs pulled out. So these are the old plugs that came out. Uh, they don't look too bad. Uh, they're a little white on the top, but that may have been from before the tune. Um, I've had these plugs in for about, probably about 15,000 miles. So, I mean, I do this like once a year-ish with uh, main stuff, just to stay on top of uh, maintenance, but, Looking at the new plugs, boom. We've got our uh, new Iridiums here. They're the exact same plugs as the one right there. So taking a look at them. Overall, they're uh, they're much cleaner. Well, obviously, since they haven't been used. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some anti-seize thrown on here. Just this little packet I picked up from AutoZone for like 15 bucks. I'm gonna get these anti-seized up and uh, we're just gonna jump into throwing them back in the car. It's the reverse process of taking them out. Now, I just take a little bit of anti-seize on my finger dab it onto the threads. You don't want a lot, so if you have excess, just kind of wipe it on the packaging, and then just, I just spread it around the threads. Don't get any on the leads up here. Don't get anything on that tip, or you're not gonna have a good time, and you're gonna have to go through and do this again when your car doesn't like you because it uh, it's not running right. So, ugh. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start throwing these back in the car. I'm only gonna record one side since I've just showed you how to take them out. It's the exact same as putting them back in. So I'm gonna put these in on the passenger side and then I will record the driver's side. So that way uh, you guys can see how to put them back in. All right guys, so here we're, here's where we stand right now. I went through and I, re, I just, I got the spark plugs, coil packs and reassembled the passenger side. Driver's side, I'm gonna walk you guys through on how to get the spark plugs and coil packs back in it's the same as the passenger side, so you shouldn't have any issues. Now, with this going in, the spark, it's so much easier to put them in than take them out. So when you're taking them out, you have to worry about that frame rail down there, uh, right there where you can see it running through the car because the spark plugs are right down in there. So, getting them in is a lot easier than taking them out. So I'm gonna get this camera set up on the broken ass tripod. This sucks that this thing broke like right during this install. This video could have been a whole lot better if this thing, this this ball head is what broke. So it's all right, I'm gonna get a new tripod ordered. This uh, tripod is rather flimsy anyways for this camera, but I'm gonna get it set up up here and we're gonna start uh, digging into the driver's side to get these spark plugs in. Super easy, I'm gonna get those two lubed up with some NICs and I'll show you how to get them in there. So sorry, I can't get the camera to go down anymore just because of the uh, the broken tripod. So what you're gonna wanna do is take your spark plug and socket guy here. Um, I've got this one lubed up. Don't put a ratchet on this yet. Go ahead and slide it into the cylinder head and then tighten it down by hand as much as you can first. To 
So now that I've gotten that one tightened down as much as I can by hand, I'm gonna grab the 3 8 ratchet, stick it on there, and then tighten it down. Um, you don't need to drive these in there extremely far. Just get them tight, snug, and uh, get them comfy. And there's one. So that first one is in. I'm gonna throw some lube on the second one and uh, we'll throw that back one in. Extension spark plug socket out. Now we're ready to put the coil packs back in. So to put the coil packs back in, I tucked one up here instead of taking it all the way out. This is my rear coil pack. You're gonna wanna put it in upside down to start. So it'll go in and then flip it 180. So doing it this way will let you clearance the frame rail so you can get it in. And then once it's flipped 180 back into position, the spark or the uh, coil pack will line up. Don't force it in. Just get it snug and then get that bolt tightened down. It's a 12 millimeter bolt on here if I didn't say that earlier. One more. So when I was saying upside down, so normally the coil pack will go in like that with the bolt on the left. What you're gonna wanna do is put it in upside down so the bolt's on the right. When the bolt's on the right, you're able to clearance the frame rail and you'll be able to get the uh, coil pack in some. So, bolt is backwards, slide it in, clears the frame rail, no problem. Flip it 180 and then slide it in. Before I tighten this one down, because I didn't plug it in, the plug is right there, I'm gonna get that plug in here first. So the tab's gonna face outwards towards the outside of the car versus inwards. And we have new spark plugs. I'm gonna go ahead and get the driver's side reassembled and then we'll uh, we'll test out the car, make sure that everything works, fires properly, and that we have, uh, we have good plugs, so. I'm gonna get to uh, reassembling this driver's side here. All right, I'm gonna hop in the car, start it, make sure it works, so make sure our spark plugs are actually doing what they're supposed to do. That'd be nice. Sick. The car runs a lot smoother than it did before. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit just to uh, break in the spark plugs. Look, break in the spark plugs a little bit more. Um, plus, with pulling out the battery and putting it back in, it kind of reset the tune a little bit. So I have to let ECU learning correct everything and make adjustments. So I'm gonna let it run for probably about five, ten minutes. But I appreciate the time that everyone has spent here. And I know that this video wasn't as in depth as I wanted it to be. It was a little difficult getting the camera to even get into where the tri or um, into where the spark plugs and the coil packs and everything are. And with the tripod breaking, it made it very limiting to where I could put the camera. So I'm gonna get a new tripod order today, so that way in the future this problem doesn't happen again. I'll get a nice big beefy Manfrotto one. Ooh, beefy tripods. Who doesn't love that? So if you have any questions about any anything that I did going through this video, please drop a comment below. And if you're not already, bam, subscribe to the channel. We got more good stuff coming. And if you're not, it's all right. I still forgive you. But I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!